It is Mike Ferry, and welcome to Mike Ferry TV. The week of January 22nd, the months go by fast. Well, you got to really pay attention. I hope you're working on the plan you have, because believe me, it's January 22nd today. In about an hour, it'll be June 1st. So let's get to work. Common question that I receive on a pretty regular basis. Mike, why are you so fanatical on why we should list property when most of your competitors talk about working with buyers as a way to make money? And let's face it, we can list homes for sale, show homes to buyers, the two primary sources for you to earn the money that you want. Why do I continually, and well, for the next couple of years, push you as hard as I do on the listing process? Well, it's, it's the only way to really truly measure the levels of success that you can have because you really can't measure showing property as being a thing that you can be held accountable to. A buyer could take three, four, five showings before they make a decision. A buyer could take 10, 15, 20 properties shown before they decide to buy one. A buyer could write offers on three or four or five properties before one is accepted. In listing property, in most cases, you go after one, either you get it or you don't. So it's a much more measurable practice. And of course, it pays better, as you'll see. So why is it so hard for people to list property? Well, I want you to think about this. And if you've seen me speak live, I've said it time and time again. The real estate industry is unique for a lot of reasons and a lot of very valid reasons. It's unique because anybody... Anybody, anywhere, anytime, tall, short, thin, heavy, old, mature, young, millennials, 80-year-olds, anybody can actually get their license and therefore, quote, unquote, be qualified to sell real estate. <laughs> That's a joke. You know that as well as I do. Because you've got a license doesn't qualify you for anything more than getting involved and participating in the real estate business. It has nothing to do with listing and selling real estate. Very few people that get involved in real estate come into the business with a strong sales background or a strong direct sales background. So as a result, the process of learning all that has to be learned to list property effectively is not only a tedious, difficult, challenging, and long process, it's easier once you get involved to realize the difficulty in listing property to just show property to buyers instead. Because you and I both know you get a, a motivated, qualified buyer, and you can find a home, and you can open the door, and if we can get you to shut up, they'll probably buy the house. But to go in and compete for listings takes certain skills. What I want to do today is a reminder to you of certain facets of listing property that if you master them, you're going to become the kind of wage earner that you say you want to become and the kind of producer and get the recognition that you deserve be, be, by becoming a great listing agent. So I'm going to give you a couple of points. I wrote down first. There are four what I call essentials to becoming a great listing agent. Now, there's probably a hundred things you have to learn and a hundred things you have to do. But there are four essentials to becoming a great listing agent. A, B, C, D, A, knowing what to do to get an actual listing appointment. Sounds easy knowing what to do to get a listing appointment. Well, if I mention the word prospecting, we cover our ears. So as soon as we cover our ears to prospecting, we're taking out the biggest segment of what to do to get a listing appointment. If I talk about aggressive lead follow-up, well, it's not my style. If I say you have to pre-qualify every seller in depth, well, I don't want to be too nosy. And then I'll say you have to make a strong scripted presentation. Oh, I don't like using scripts. Well, you see right off the bat, knowing what to do gives you the confidence and gives you the edge on the competition to get listings. So the four essentials, essential number one is knowing what to do. Then essential number two is knowing what to say when you get on the actual appointment. It's interesting. Look at how little actual training is done in our wonderful business in relationship to exact scripts what to say to a seller. Very little training is actually done. Most people avoid it because the training that we offer is question-based, which creates confrontation, and most people don't like confrontation, can't handle it, so therefore they don't use scripts. Mike, I just go in and kind of tell them about me. 
And I tell them about my company and who we are and what we do. Okay, so think about this. Would you list your property with somebody based on them telling all about yourself? Of course not. You want somebody that knows what to do to get the property sold and knows what to say to get the listing. The third essential, and this is a hard one, learning to manage all the listings and the transactions that take place. You commit to listing three or four properties a month. You're going to have three or four properties a month to sell. You're going to have those pendings. You're going to have the mortgages, the title, all the complications that go with succeeding. You have to learn to become a manager of transactions if you're going to be a great listing agent. And then essential letter D, and this is a hard one, learning to live with the income. Because the agents that are listing property are always going to earn dramatically more money than those agents that work with buyers simply because of the time involved. Second point, okay, I wrote down. If I want to become a strong listing agent, I have to be careful to never take the path of least resistance. Now, people say to me all the time, what do you mean, never take the path of least resistance? Well, do you have any leads right now, buyers or sellers? Of course you do. Are you honestly, aggressively calling them, trying to get appointments? Of course you're not. Okay, so you're taking the path of least resistance. Well, I'm waiting for the right moment to call the lead. <laughs> the right moment? Or I'm waiting for them to call me. They're supposed to call you? Okay, watch, aggressive lead follow-up is getting off the path of least resistance. Well, look, look at overpricing a listing to get a listing is the path of least resistance. Cutting your commission is the path of least resistance. If you get on the path of least resistance where you're taking the easy way out, it's hard to get off that path. The hard work, the energy that you put in today is going to pay off in 30, 60, 90 days and for the rest of your career. But you got to put in the hard work. Now, if all you say to yourself is, well, if I can just do a deal now and then, my average commission check is eight grand and I do a couple deals, well, we're not looking to talk to you. That's not the real estate professional that we're trying to groom, develop, and help become better than they are. We're looking for a person that has defined goals. The goals are lofty. They have to work to accomplish them. They have to be trained, be held accountable. They work with a good broker manager. They have great coaches like us. And we remind them that if the path of least resistance is their path, they're never going to have high success. The third thought I wrote down, to become a strong listing agent, I have to eliminate <laughs> all the crazy options that are out there on how to succeed without working. I, I'm always amazed that so many of these crazy options pop up as the market gets better and better and better. 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, all the crazy options went away. Because if you weren't willing to learn how to do your job, you weren't going to do deals. Well, 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, the market went back up. All the crazy options are out there. You don't have to prospect. You don't have to talk to people. Just use this little mailing. Just try this ad on Facebook. You're going to get rich. Well, you and I really know the only person getting rich is the one selling you the gimmick. So the people that are going to succeed listing property are taking a straightforward path of salespersonship, of sales skills, sales dialogues to get to that particular point. So between getting off the path of least resistance, I have to eliminate the options they're distracting me, pulling me off the track. All right, let's go to the fourth point for today. I wrote down, when I know what to say, I can do what I'm supposed to do. However, when I don't know what to say, I'll freeze, I'll panic, or I'll just not make any more presentations because I'm too uncomfortable in the situation. The key to success in business, the key to success in life, the key to success in selling and listing is knowing what to say. So what do we do? We try to create things that we should say. Huh? Well, let me, let me spend some time telling you about the pumpkins I pass out every October. And I have this little card I mail out to a couple hundred people every couple of weeks. And then what I do is I'll try to hold an open house when it's convenient for you, of course. Well, now watch, folks. If you know what to say, you can walk in and ask the questions that cause them to think about what they should do, which brings you closer to getting a contract signed. 
I am telling you for a fact the key to success is the knowledge of what to say so you can execute the way you want to execute. The quote that I saw several weeks ago, when I know what to do, do it. If I don't know what to do, learn it. Okay, do you want to go against me on a listing presentation? I don't think so. Can you go against the top agent in the company on a listing and win most of the time? I don't think so. Know what to say, you win all the time. Well, thanks for participating. <laughs> we only have a few days left in the month of January. Finish strong, work hard, do your job. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for today.